love of God. As a matter of fact, I believe that song had laid the foundation for what I wanted. I'm going to talk about. All right. Thank you very much. You may be seated, please. This is our first Sunday, so we welcome our online viewers and we trust that they will be edified, empowered, rejuvenated, and ignited by the word. Amen. There's a prophetic word that is very, very common. It's well known. In the last days, said the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon how many flesh again? All flesh. Sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall dream. Young men shall see visions. Old men dream dreams. Upon your handmaid and your servant will I pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. The people then to whom the prophet was speaking understand the importance and the value of getting the Holy Spirit. They knew the Holy Spirit is God. And for the Holy Spirit to come upon them, they know that God was visiting them. It's unfortunate that today's world, we put no value on the Holy Spirit. We more have him talking than acting. And until we return to understand who he really is, what he came to do, we might not be able to access all that great anointing that he have brought to the human race. We're going to read from Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. So once I start in Revelation, you know that the sermon is going to be short. God, that's the last book, am I right? <laughs> uh, uh, Revelations chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 1, and may read maybe five, six, or seven verses. <laughs> oh, there we are. We, our team is very sharp this morning, so I would prefer if you look in your Bibles anyway, because the overhead doesn't substitute for you having the Bible. You may, of course, use your tablet if you have it on it. And um, we're cautious about you using your phone since you might sip over to Amazon and we don't want you to go there to buy anything at this time. We want you to concentrate on the word. And I'm going to ask you please to stand in honor to the word of God. We're going to read what, seven verses, am I right? So we're going to read it together. One, two, three. On to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Right. These things say he that hold the seven stars in his right hand, who walk in the midst of the seven golden candlestick. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how you cannot bear them who are evil, and you have tried them who say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has patience, 
and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Continue. Nevertheless, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Remain standing. Father, we thank you for your word. Your words are priceless because they are spirit and they are life. We ask that the Holy Spirit that you have given to us will rise up at this time to shut down all the distraction, shut down any other voice except the voice of the Lord to speak. We're asking in the name of the Lord Jesus that as you influence, impact, and impart to the congregation, many will benefit from the truth of God's word. And that the power of your kingdom government will go into operation to heal, to deliver, to set free, shutter yokes, lift burden, and do all that man cannot do to set the captives free so that we can come into a greater knowledge of who you are and to better worship you. I pray God that you will mantle me as your servant, that I speak as the oracles of God, and that the glory and the honor will all be yours through Jesus Christ and we say you may be seated please the bishop of the house wears many caps you know I can be your friend but I'm also your bishop am I right I am pastor Hope husband but I'm also her Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> I'm her husband, but I'm also her bishop. All right. Um, I was sent and came into the earth realm at this time. I came to the kingdom for such a time as this that I can declare, make known, bring to people attention that the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that Jesus Christ preached. Most of us grow up in a culture of going to heaven to rest. God has a different agenda. God's agenda is to restore the relationship of the human race with him relationship that have been broken and compromised by sin and to reconnect us to a kingdom that mankind has lost all of this has been like missing over the years but now we know the plans and the heart of God for the human race and by extension the universe I remember one day I invited a friend of mine. She's from another church, and um, you know, I, um, he came visited here, and he heard me talking about the kingdom and and about you not going to heaven because that's not in the Bible. And he wanted to talk with me about what I said, so I invited him, and he came. And I went to this very book, Book of Revelation, and I read. From Revelation 20, I just uh, I said, let us read Revelation chapter 21. And you read of the new heaven and the new earth that God created. And the new Jerusalem came, coming down out of heaven, come to earth. And a voice that said, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he shall dwell with them. And... Uh, all that follows there 
God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes and no more sickness. And, so. and when he read that, he didn't want to read anything more. He said, but not a thing that man. I didn't have to even try to convince him because it is in the book that God is restoring the human race to a glorious, majestic, all-powerful environment of his kingdom on the new earth that he is going to make, all right? He's going to create. It's there. I don't know why we uh, don't preach it more often because when you preach about people going to heaven, they love it. Oh, they feel so good. So nice. Praise the Lord. I'm going to no, no, no. <laughs> you know, um, that's not what the, the, the Bible is saying. Actually, the new human race that is going to be in the glory and the image of God is going to come back to earth. A renewed earth, not this one, a renewed earth that is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. Anybody, anybody ever read that? If you have ever read that, say amen. Okay, you have read that the earth is groaning and travailing and waiting for what again? The manifestation of who? Children of God. You have read that? You can read it in Romans chapter 8. So if we are going to fly away to heaven, the earth would be very disappointed. <laughs> I hope I get your attention. The earth would be very disappointed. This portion of scripture that we have read um, it's very important that we understand the, um, the background and what led up to this, where um, John was, uh, on, was exiled, as a matter of fact, on, a, on the Isle of Patmos. The Isle of Patmos was a place where political prisoners, persons who go against the government, was, were imprisoned. And John was on the Isle of Patmos, where there were other political prisoners. And um, he had this vision of all that is written in the book of Revelation. And um, then the Lord showed him what is going to happen to the church over the years. All right? And um, he started at Ephesus as the first church, and then there are six more churches of which represents the church from the beginning to the end of time. All right? How the church is going to behave and what the church is going to do. It's, it's interesting to read, to read all of this because if you read this, you will discover that we are really in the end time because of the way the church is behaving right now. I don't mean this church, by the way. <laughs> there are some stuff that is going on which if you follow it, you'll know that those things were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ and they are being fulfilled right now. Mm -hmm. Uh so these seven churches were selected to represent the church age. Uh, you can find yourself in any one of these churches. In, even in the 21st century, you can find yourself in the way that the, what characterizes the church and um, what the church is doing and so forth. You, you can be in any one of these churches. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? He's telling John, write what I'm telling you about this ch church. These things said he that holds the what? You shut up your Bible? You need to look in the Bible and follow, right? That hold the seven stars in his right hand who walk in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Now, 
uh, th th it's very important the way that Christ uh, represents himself to the church because he represented himself to the church according to the needs of the church. And uh, the angels of the church and the lampstand, they are typical of the ministers and of the particular church, all right? Um, so unto the angel of the church. Each church, I believe, I believe, this is my uh, belief that uh, most churches has a angels, angel that is set over them, you know. I, I, I strongly believe that because this church would not be here except there was an angel assigned to this church. I, I say that because I have that experience, all right? And understanding. Um, and the seven lampstand recommend are, are the churches. So here he is, he had the ministers in his hand, which are the seven stars, seven stars, he had the ministers in his hand, the seven angels in his hand. The stars are typical of the angel of the angels set over the church. And the seven golden lampstands is the church itself. So he has this, the ministers in his hand and he walk in the midst of the church. So he is in the midst of the church. So Christ knows what is going on in the church. Nobody have to tell him. He knows what is going on in the church. And he is the one that supply pastors to the church, uh, right? Um, we have a lot of persons you know, who call themselves pastors these days, whatever. But it, a pastor is a shepherd, and that comes from the hand of God, all right? So that's the minister. Um, and he said to the church, I know thy works. Nobody tell me about it. Himself, pastor, I know it's this, whatever. What you're doing. But it, a pastor yeah? is a shepherd. And I know what kind of work you're doing. The hand here. of God. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> and I know. So that's the minister. Me make sure. Um, how hard you're working. And uh, he said. I know how church, hard you work. I know. I know how work. patient you have been. Nobody tell me about and it. I know you cannot it's tolerate evil you're doing, people. What you're doing. But it, a pastor yeah? is I even know that you tested some people who and come and say they are apostles of God. Yeah? Right. And, and, I, and I found them that they are liars. Make sure how hard yeah. you're working. I, I know all of that. I know how church. hard you work. And I know how I know patient, patient you have been. been. And I know how you have and I know suffered you to tolerate evil for people my name's sake. Yeah. I even know that you tested some people who come and said they are apostles. You would not give up. Yeah? Yeah? And, and, I, and I found they are doing they are some great work. I know how you, oh, you are working, working so hard that. until you are weary. And, and when people you have try to get you to deny and my name, you are not doing that. For my name's sake, I even know that you're working hard. You would not give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and found they are doing some great work. I know how your church might have been involved in all kinds of social intervention. They might have been feeding the poor. They might have been my name. You're not accommodating governmental leadership and doing all different kinds of, work, in, of so work and so forth. It was well known yeah. in Ephesus what this church was doing. But set them in in all kinds of You would hardly believe that people were working so hard in the poor and who would not give up on the name of the Lord Jesus that you could have anything against such people. 
doing all different kinds of work, of work and so forth. But it was well known said the in Lord, Ephesus, I have but the truth was doing against you. I have but something the Lord, in it against you. All kinds of the work in all that people are working so hard in the poor. And who go to church, give up on the name of the church Lord, every day. That you could have anything against such you are people. working in your community, of work, and so you are praying for everybody. Was well known, said the Lord, Ephesus, especially social intervention. Maybe you are something, doing some prayer march and praying. You are working all that people are working so hard, and all those are and the church, the church, the the word there. Is working hard. Working in your is community actually mean to work. That's why we everybody working hard, <laughs> especially <laughs> social <laughs> intervention. Um, anyway, all those are good things. But and I have something against it. What is it you have against the Lord? Lord? The word there. You have done something. Working hard. Working in your Let community. me see if I can read it. Work. You have you left. Working hard. Your first love. Special social <laughs> intervention. Um, anyway. Yeah. All those are good things. You have left your first love. I have something against you. Mm. What is it you have against the Lord? And you and have, you have fallen. Hard. In your Let me see if I can read it. Remember, therefore, you from have when left you are fallen. Your first love. There's a fallen church doing all kind of hard work. Um, anyway, you yeah. think? All those are better than they used to. Um, but because they don't love the Lord again, that is why these things are happening. You can come up with a lot of things out of that if <laughs> you don't know the Lord. Fall in church doing all kind of work. I've seen that in Jamaica. Working until they're weary, yet not doing the first work. So what we need to find out, who says that? What is the first works? Am I right? If I'm right, say amen. Good. What is the first works? So let us go to look at the first works. Before, before I even go to the first works, I believe that, not just believe, I know that, Lots of persons in church believe that love is some kind of sentiments or some kind of emotional response to something. That's what most people in church think. And that They measure you by what you're doing and believe that you don't have any love because you have not gone down to the police station to, <laughs> to minister to the people who are locked up down there. Uh, you have not joined in the religious work that people are doing. They said they, you don't have no love. Love is not a sentimental, emotional response to anything. The love that you should have. You are disciplining, you are disciplining your child. Are you really against some good lick? You say, you know, you know, love me, that's why you... So, because um, I should not punish you, you should not be held to accountability because I love you. <laughs> Hello? We have seen that where children are, they can do anything and say anything without any kind of a discipline. And I will tell you that you don't love your child. 
because love has within it discipline. You can't afford for your children to, your child to be going next door where they are selling crack and cocaine. Oh, you don't hear me, you're gone. Because if my child is going over there, I am going to discipline my child till they learn not to go there. So, evil company and corrupt good manners. Okay, that's why God disciplined every son that He received. That's in the Bible, by the way. Because it said, if you are not disciplined, you are a bastard. You are not really a son. Are you there? So love is not a sentimental response or emotional response to anything. And the love, the love of God, therefore, could not be sentimental. Most people actually do not know the love of God. They don't know it because they have not been taught it, although it's in the Bible. Because God actually don't have love. Ah, there we got some, we have some anointed people in the congregation. God doesn't have love because God is his love. So God created angels and then he created the human race in his image and in his likeness. And if you read your Bible carefully, you will discover that God has never said to his angels that you should love me. He said they should worship him. They should praise him. But he can't ask them to love him. Because angels don't have the capacity to love. But for you, he said, you need to love the Lord your God. All your heart. All your strength and all your understanding. The human factor, the human need to, to love God. Why? They were created with the capacity. <laughs> and the ability to reciprocate. They, they have love because they are created in the image and the likeness of God. I believe that the, the whole message and the hard, vociferous, passionate preaching of going to heaven has robbed the church from some of the most important and essential information that God wants to give you. And that is, you need to know who you are. That's the crisis that we are facing. The crisis is People in the church don't have a clue who they are. Why you don't know who you are? Because you have not engaged and put out effort to know who God is. You need to know God. I believe if some people know who God is, they would not be talking about God the way they do. They would have more awe, more reverence. But they don't know the being who spoke and this universe came into being. He spoke just by talking. Here comes the universe, all kind of galaxies and solar systems and suns and moon and, sun and all those things. We need to be in awe of this God, in reverence of this God. So we need to know God if you know God. If you know God, if you really know God, you will know who you. <laughs> well, maybe I need to say that again. Say, neighbor, if you know God, 
you will know who you are. The Holy Spirit downloaded this to me early one morning. As a matter of fact, not just early one morning, Saturday morning. And I want to share it with you. Where God came down and spoke to Israel when he took them out of Egypt. Anybody can remember that? Come, when, when he took them out of Egypt, he told Moses, gather them at Mount Sinai and I am going to come down and I'm going to talk to the people. Do you, anybody remember that? We tend to, tend to not to read the Bible, so let me take the time and let me take the energy to remind you that in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, God came down on the mount that is called Sinai to talk to the people of Israel that he took out of Egypt. You can read it for yourself. I believe it starts at Exodus chapter 19 and go all the way. You can read it for yourself. And the sight was so fearful. Fire. Thunder, lightning. I don't know if any brimstone was there. <laughs> and a loud trumpet. The sight was so fearful. That the Bible said even Moses trembled with God coming down and God spoke to the people. And he gave them ten letters. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. All right? And, and then he said something which we overlook since most people just talk about the Ten Commandments he gave. He said, do not build anything or make anything to represent me in the earth. No, nothing in the sky, nothing on the earth, nothing in the sea. You are not to build anything to represent me in the earth. Now, our first understanding of that is that he was warning them against idolatry. Warn against idolatry. He said, you're not to worship idols. But if you take it a little deeper, he was saying more than that. God was saying to those people, you can't make a representative of me that look like a donkey. Because you're actually degrading your own self. Wait, let me come over here. Sir. <laughs> because you are made in my image, in my likeness, and you're not a donkey. Are you in your house with me? So it was, don't try to make anything that look like me because you are me in the earth. Watch this. So, in, that's the old covenant. Under the new covenant, God came and spoke as the final prophetic voice to the human race. God spoke. Yeah? Yeah? And the people in his days actually call him Beelzebub. Oh, you're not there. Or maybe if I said Jesus came and they call him Beelzebub, you would more understand it. But Jesus Christ is God. Are you still there? Because we fail to recognize him, and degrade him and do all kinds of things about him. We will never ever know who we are until we know who he is. In the house with me? Now the name Jesus is very common. It's, it's very common in nations. A lot of persons know about Jesus. 
And even in the church, people talk about Jesus. And Jesus to most people is just a name disconnected from a person. All right. When you understand it, you say amen. Because you can be saying, Lord, Lord, but don't have a clue who you're talking about. So most people in church say, Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, precious name of Jesus, holy name of Jesus, but it is disconnected from the person that the name is attached to because that person is actually God. Well, on a little bit. Well, on a little bit. Let me come over here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him, there's nothing made that was made. And in one profound statement, the Bible put it like this. And the word became flesh. And we beheld. We look on the only begotten son of God. So the word is. Jesus is. Every time you go on the internet, you see some religious question. Is Jesus God? Yes, Jesus is God. He is God. Therefore, whenever he speaks, you need to listen. Whatever he says, you need to investigate. You need to put out effort to understand what he said. How did we get the gospel of going to heaven when he came with the gospel of the kingdom of heaven? Because they have not paid attention. They have not put out any effort to investigate. People can tell the church anything and they believe, you know. You know? Anytime they want to give, you, give misinformation and do all kind of foolishness, it's the first place they come to the church. Because church people believe anything without looking in their Bible to see if or so they go. Oh, you don't hear me, though. But we here, we're not fool, fool. <laughs> because if you come, you need to talk from your Bible. Because we have one, too. And we are just where they say everything in the Bible. It's very, very important. That's why the church is so misinformed. Because person come on this pulpit, and the moment they come on the pulpit, they have some kind of authority. And they speak all kind of things that have nothing to do with your faith and with your spirit. All right? They may speak some good things, by the way, but never write things. This pulpit is here. To preach the gospel of the who? The gospel of the kingdom. All right. So watch this. I come back to my text. Sorry to have deviated like that. We must know who, who Christ is. Because in the end of the process, we shall be looking like Christ. Hello? Who look like God? Anybody in the house with me? The glory, the majesty. The immortality. All that God is doing in, is to carry us back to what Adam has lost in the beginning and to reconnect us to the kingdom rulership that we have. All right? Watch this. So this church didn't lose the love, you know. They left it. They left the who? Left the love. That means they left who? Oh, come on now, talk to me. They left who? Because God is? Okay. So they left their first love. And let us now go to 
the first love. They were there working hard, hard. They were having all kind of a different programs, all kind of different intervention, all kind of whatever work you can. They were working so hard that they were becoming weary, but they're working anyway, believe they are pleasing God. But according to God, no, you're not pleasing me. You have actually fallen. Why you fall? Because you left your who? Your first love. Now the first love we have to look for. What and the first works? Do your first works. Do your first what? Do the first works. Now this church started in a marvelous, miraculous, and supernatural way. You know? The church at Ephesus. This church, I believe, uh, Acts chapter, I think is 19. This church, the apostle Paul went down to Ephesus. And he went down to river. And he found some disciples, some people who believe in God, down there. They were actually Jews. And he asked them, have you received the first love? Hold on a little bit. <laughs> because you need to understand this thing. All right? Ephesians chapter 19, verse. Let me see. Woo. Ephesians chapter 19. Chapter, okay, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2. Oh, Acts chapter, thank you very much, my anointed. Acts chapter 19 and verse 2. And it says, He said, all right. And it came to pass that when Apollos was at Corinth and Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and find certain disciples. Watch this. You have to read your Bible. Oh, it's up there. Thank you very much. And he said to them, have you received the who? Say Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Since you believe. And they said unto him, go, we have not so much as heard whether there be any what holy ghost and he said to them unto what then were ye baptized and they said john baptized us now if you understand john baptism it's a baptism of repentance then paul said john truly baptized with the baptism of saying unto the people that should believe on him which should come after john that is on christ jesus and when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus six and when paul had laid his hands upon them the who the who came on them and they did what and what come on talk to me now so when remember now the holy spirit is not a feeling the Holy Spirit is not a jerk. The Holy Spirit is? It's God. The Holy Spirit is? The Holy Spirit is? We have to understand that. It's very, very important. When you go the road and you're talking to anybody and them, and them say they must serve God, if you ask them which one, because it's important to know. There are three persons in the Godhead. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And God's name is Jehovah. Are you there with me? It's very important for us to understand this God. You can't try to reason it all to the head. You just receive it by what the Bible said. Receive it. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they receive God, the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in tongues and to speak prophetically from the word. Anybody in the house with me? 
That is something that man cannot do, but only God can make you do. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? It means God came to them. And they began to speak. Just as it was in the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost come and the 120 that was in the upper room and the power came. Are you there with me? What we are looking at in this age is a powerless church. Church will get mixed up in a politics. I not in the house with me. And that is why the supernatural element has been left from the church because the church is now having a form. Say form. form. Say form. form. Form of godliness but denying what? Form. The power thereof. Hello somebody. You're still there with me. I need to preach until you vex and start throwing stone in But we are not. Because truth, people don't love truth. They accept this church. I know that this church loves truth. Because that's, we were created to live by the word of God. Truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free from all kind of bad mind. All kind of witchcraft working. All kind of religious practices. All kind of fighting. Backbiting. Yes, sir. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So what these guys left, if you read this carefully, you'll discover that Paul, you know, went to Ephesus, you know, and he started to preach about the kingdom of God. And he lay hand on the sick. People were healed. Are you there with me? Demons come out of people. And even handkerchief, aprons, touch his body. And they send the apron go down a hand over. Put you on the sick. Sick healed. Are you there with me, somebody? My God. So, what Christ was saying, repent, man. And stop. Give me sweat. I want no sweat. I want anointing that shatter yoke. An anointing that lift burden. An anointing that drive out demon. Anointing that brings sick. I, can anybody in the house talk to me? Are you there with me? We don't want a talking church. We want a kingdom church. That by God, for the kingdom is not in words only, but is in power. Can you say amen? Lord of mercy. I wonder if I can preach this thing. You left your first love. You have left the Holy Ghost. I'm going to fool around social intervention. Oh no, you don't hear me. Can I talk to somebody in the house? Remember when we came to this to Mount Salem with this church and we come to a volatile community that has all kind of violence and all kind of different things occurring. And uh, <laughs> And after the devil come for what belonged to him and left, God said to me, take your prayer service on the street and pray and address the heavens. Anybody in the house with me? Talk to the heavens. Address it. Bind, shut down, incarcerate, disallow, don't preach, speak today. That was when I understood what when Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom, that what you bind where? Not on Mars, <laughs> not on Jupiter, you bind where? Earth. And then I will deal with it from heaven because things that are happening on the earth is actually coming from the heavenly places. 
So I need to tell you something. Most of you sitting here, maybe 90%, believe Satan is in hell. Talk the truth. Because that's how we learn it. We learn that Satan is in hell. Are you there with me? But that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what? Principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in hell. Oh, spiritual wickedness that they are high place. Can somebody talk to me in the church? Can somebody talk to me in the church? All right, so you know where we are. And if you understand your position as a kingdom citizen, you are seated above principality and power. Are you there with me, somebody? If you are seated above, that means you have the authority over them. Can anybody talk to me? But we not learn, we not reach us yet. We still go. I haven't got rest. We not reach the kingdom dynamics and kingdom understanding of who we are. We just want to go to heaven and relax. Still in the house with me, somebody. But you need to know that when you're talking about Satan, him not down there. He is in the high places and we are seated over him because that's what the Bible says. You believe the Bible says amen? amen? You really believe the Bible says amen? amen? That means you agree with me because the Bible said God raised up Jesus before, before he go to the raise up part. He said he exerted a power. That is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. A, not an ordinary power. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. Not something ordinary. He, he exerted this power. Put it up. Let me, let me see if we can get it. Ephesians. 19, 19, 19, and what is the exceeding greatness, read it with me, exceeding greatness of his power to who? Say me, because I'm a believer, because the power cannot go to those who don't believe. Are you there with me? According to the working of his mighty power, 20, 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him where? From the dead and set him where? At his own right hand, where? In heavenly places, far above who? Principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. Are you there with me? And put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over the, all things to the who? Church. To the church. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 quickly. And verse, is it 5? Ephesians chapter 2. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickness, that word mean, made us alive, together with who? By grace are you saved. And then what? And has raised us up together and made us sit where? Together where? In who? Come on, talk to me now, church. So where are you seated right now? That's why you, give, you are given the authority. You are given the authority, which is the keys of the kingdom. And you need to know how to wield that authority within the range of your influence. Can you say amen? So this church has left the supernatural and gone over 
in today's social. Oh, you're not there with me. <laughs> this church has left the supernatural to go on into the natural. Are you there with me? We have some voices that are in, in our nation of the voices from the church. And what is recognized mostly in the church is if you embark on some humongous social reformation, you know. Social reformation. Social intervention. That means you use something, your money or whatever, to influence a particular community where education is lacking, the little social ethics and those kind of things are not there. And education is not there, good health is not there, and so you, you, you use whatever to influence that to bring what is called social transformation. Are you the host with me? So we have the word transformation being tossed around which is something from outside that you implement to bring social order out of chaos and whatever. You understand what I'm saying? But when God comes to work, it's not social transformation. It's spiritual impartation. Shatter yokes, lift burden, shut down demonic activity, incarcerate evil angel, suspend the dominion of darkness so that the kingdom of God can operate. Can somebody talk to me? And you do that by praying and knowing who you are and know somebody talk to me in the house man many of the volatile communities around the place some of them have the most little, little churches don't have a clue who they are anybody here with me though they don't know anything about any kingdom they know that they're going to heaven all right they're going to heaven they know that and a nice place to go <laughs> where they can sing and shout and dance about <laughs> you don't do that here <laughs> Because you are working so hard. <laughs> You're in the house with me. But God is after sons. And he is after citizens in a kingdom. And every citizen has legal rights. Hello? As a citizen, you have legal rights. To talk to your government. To come fix the road. Put up the street light. You know, you're not there with me. Because as, you're not a member of Jamaica, you know. Yeah, who said that? You, you, these people are, are way ahead of me, you know, they're so anointed. <laughs> you're not a member of Jamaica. You are a citizen of Jamaica. And every citizen have rights according to the constitution. So we don't, we are not here to live our first love. Because the love that we say, that we love God with, you know. I know, so what are we born with, you know? Because people say, we love God a long time. You don't know, understand what love is. Love is shed abroad into our heart by who? By the Holy Spirit. So that the love with which you love God now is the same love that God loves you with. You know? All right. What you need to do is to let your love grow and become strong and become wise. Your love needs to grow in knowledge and in wisdom and spiritual understanding. Anybody in the house with me? So this church has fallen and still they work. <laughs> Remember that, you know. Remember you, you, have le you have left your first love. Yeah, I, 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 I left my first love. I, mean, I, go, I go back to my church. <laughs> That's not your first love. <laughs> you need hand laid upon you. 
you need to receive the Holy Ghost and power to destroy some yoke and some demonic agent for the follow you up and down. Anybody else with me? You're still there. The church is a supernatural entity on the planet. Holy Ghost! Reign on us. <laughs> Hallelujah. If, you, if you're going to some church and say that, you know, see some nice little people that have gone out the door, you know. <laughs> God, they don't want to hear that. <laughs> God, I'm going to try to do this thing by their own strength. Holy Ghost! Reign on us. Hello, somebody. Are you in the house with me? Holy Ghost! Reign on us. Come on, talk to me, church. Talk to me, church. Are you there with me? We are living in an age which part people are going to church, go through people, not inside us. Holy Ghost! Reign on us. Can I talk to you? Are you in the house with me? Holy Ghost! Reign on us. Holy Ghost! Hallelujah! 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 Holy Ghost! Rain on us, rain on us, rain on us, rain on us, Holy Ghost! Yep. Hallelujah! 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 Let young men have visions and old men dream dreams upon your sons and your daughters. Let prophetic words start come in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, shatter every yoke and lift every burden. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! If you go to some places, if you go to some church, you dare not even raise your hand and say hallelujah. Or the usher will come to visit you. Hello, somebody. If you are sick in the house right now, the kingdom of God is here to heal, to deliver, and to set you free. I said the kingdom of God, because you cannot have the operation of kingdom without the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Jesus said it like this, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out devils, then the kingdom of God is operating right now. We bind demonic and satanic operation right now. We overcome the devil. Say it with me. I know that you, some of you are very, you know, cultured and very... Nah, you're not saying it as loud as me. You don't have to say it as loud as me, but say it anyway. We overcome the devil. The blood of the Lamb and the word, and the word of my testimony. My testimony. We overcome. We overcome the devil. The devil with the blood. With the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb and the word. And the word of our testimony. Of our testimony. We overcome. We overcome the devil. The devil with the blood. With the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb and the word. And the word of our testimony. Our testimony. Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet everywhere. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 
Aleluia Aleluia Satan is the prince yes. and the power yes. of the atmosphere of the air but we're changing the air in this place That's right. Jesus Christ yeah. you are Lord you are Lord say it again Jesus Christ Jesus Christ you are Lord you are Lord Lord of our international worship center Lord of our international worship center Hallelujah! If you know who you are, carry the genes of God in your spirit you are born again you are washed with the blood you are seated with Christ in heavenly places as he is so are we in this world are you there with me somebody are you still there with me? I have the keys. Say it with me. I have, I have the, keys, the keys. The authority, the authority of, the kingdom of the kingdom of God. Of God. You have to watch it now you know, because I'm about, I'm about to buy him something. You know, so you have to watch it now. <laughs> yes. I'm buying backsliding. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. I bind sickness. Yeah, in Jesus name. I bind pain. I bind disease. In, Jesus name. in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. In, oh, come Lord, oh, I bind poverty. I bind lack. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Come on, yes. talk to me, church. Yes. You're sure you're in the house. Oh. Hallelujah. Say neighbor, neighbor, I am not leaving. I am not leaving. My first love. My first love. <laughs> Tell your neighbor on the other side. Neighbor, neighbor, I am not leaving. I'm not leaving. My first love. My first love. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> My, 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 my. I say God's love is like a burning fire. Fire! Deep down in my soul. Jesus said, I come to baptize with Holy Ghost and what? God's love is like a burning fire deep down, deep down in my soul. Oh yeah. Come we're going to say it one more time. Come on, we say God's love is like a burning down in my soul the bible said you know the bible said on the day of pentecost you know a sound came from heaven like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were and cloven tongues of fire was upon them and they were all filled with the holy ghost can you say amen i said God's love is like a burning fire deep down in my 
It's like a burning fire. It's like a burning fire. Deep down. Deep down. In my soul. Thank you for joining us today. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. For more enlightening messages like these, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by logging on to the links on your screen below. We want to keep our television program on the air. You can assist by sowing a seed faith offering. You will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Please call the numbers on the screen and for information on how to assist. Call us today. Fire.